Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you 25 user interface tips in EverQuest. What I have here is the Titanium client installed. I'm here on project 1999. And at first, getting used to EverQuest can be a little difficult. So what I want to do is go down my list of 25 tips that will make user the user experience in EverQuest a little bit better. So let's get started. Number one, the lock and unlock feature. So any window that's on the user interface, you can right click and choose to lock it or not. So if I wanted to drag this round, around, I could do that. But since I like that in the middle right there, what you can do is you just right click whenever you have that omnidirectional drag icon and you right click and go down to lock and then you can no longer accidentally drag that around anymore. That's great because most of your user interface, you don't really wanna drag around. Some of it you may want to, such as the chat windows, so you may want to keep those draggable. It's really up to you, but this is just one simple way to make it so that you get the user interface exactly how you want it. Number two is setting your max frames per second to 60. If you hit Alt-O, which is the default for opening your options, and go to display, you're going to see a max frames per second value. I recommend setting this to 60 simply because I've seen this cause so many problems with the mouse turn in this game. If this is set really high, what happens is it'll do something like this. If I go into first person perspective and try to mouse turn, you'll see that it's super slow, which is really annoying. So what you want to do, I don't know why it causes that, but it just does. And if you set that to 60, now it's normal. You right click and you can mouse turn and it looks and feels normal. I know most people that play these kind of games prefer doing mouse turning even in third person camera. So that's a great tip. You definitely want to know. And here that's a pretty common complaint. So you definitely want to check that. Number three is using shift one through zero. That way you can use not only one through zero for actions, but you can also use shift one through zero. So what I have here with Duke's UI, this enables you to have access to multiple button sets. For example, I have button set one and I have button set two. And most people only have one button set. So for example, I do, you know, five and that will play, it'll click button number five right here. But what most people don't have configured is setting it up here in hot bar two under keys. And as you can see, I have shift one through zero set up for hot bar two and for hot buttons one through 10. And what that does is, for example, if I hit shift, uh, shift two, it'll do hide, or if I do shift four, it'll do assist. So for example, I hit shift two, there I go, I'm gone. I can toggle it, shift two, and it comes right back. This makes it great simply because you have access to so many more buttons with your number keys. And you can even extend this principle to control if you start adding in additional, uh, as you can see, you can have even more than two. You can, you can even use control if you wanted to do that. So that's another option as well. Tip number four is dual binding your keys to do spells, to do skills or abilities that you do all the time. This is a great thing to do if you want to use sense heading or location all the time. So as you can see in my keys under movement, my, I like to strafe a lot. I'm a strafer. So when I press left and right, I actually strafe instead of doing keyboard turning because I turn with my mouse, so I don't need that. So strafe left, I have bound to S, which is an overloaded key as they call it or strafe right will give me F. And what this is doing is what I'll show you here. This is also bound to hot bar one for nine and 10. So what that's doing is every time I press my S key, I'm an ESDF guy, by the way. So it doesn't matter what key you assign this to. So if I, every time I press S, I'm also doing sense heading. As you can see, that's doing hot key number nine right there. And when I press F, I get locations. So it's really easy for me to navigate simply by strafing around. And that, that's a really nice thing to have because it makes it easier to figure out where you are in the zone, your current look. Because I'm often checking my location. But you could really put any skill in there. I just prefer sense heading and loc. Maybe you like putting tracking in there or foraging. Really, whatever you want to put in there. Some kind of skill that your class or your race uses. You can plug it in and use it and that will make life a little bit easier for you. Tip number five, I recommend binding a single key to open all of your bags at once. So as you can see in under keys in the commands drop down, I have one for open all inventory bags and one shift B for closing all. So it's really nice because it opens them all up and I can close them all at the same time. It beats digging through your bags and trying to figure out where everything is. It's 
a waste of time to just open everything at once and just close everything at once. It's a lot easier. Saves you a lot of time. Tip number six is navigating your chat history. Personally, I like to use shift up and down arrow. So if I go in here and I focus on the input and I press shift up, I can see what I've said previously and I can even say it again if I want to do that. If not, or I can go down to go down through the history. And this could be configured in your chat under under keys. Just go in there and change it to whatever you want it to be. But shift up and down work pretty well. Tip number seven is navigating within the chat message itself. Let's say you wanted to actually move your cursor around and add some words. Uh, ASDF, you know, you can plug in and just use sh hold down shift and use the left and right arrow and you can navigate around wherever you want it to be. I know a lot of people didn't don't know about this simply because it'll, this will come up a lot when you're trying to message somebody and you want to go up and maybe you just wanted to maybe you had a typo and you wanted to change the name or something like that. That's a great way to do that. Tip number eight, I like to use shift R to reply to whoever last sent me a private message. Now, like most MMOs, you can receive a private message. And what's there's two ways to respond to that person. Sometimes some people like to do slash R. But the problem is with that is that will reply to whoever the most recent person was. So if someone tells, sends you another message, it can totally mess that up. So what you're going to want to do instead is actually hit shift R and that'll populate the input with what whoever last sent you a message and that way it'll capture it in, that, in time at that moment. And of course, that doesn't matter if it's shift R or anything else. You can just set that to whatever you prefer it to be. Tip number nine, know that you can go directly into certain chat modes using a hotkey. Personally, this is maybe a little odd, but I like to use the apostrophe just to go, for example, if I'm playing the game and I want to hit apostrophe, that'll... I can just be like, hello, and that'll directly go into say no matter what. Because in this game, you have to be careful because you can, what I like to do is I always set my default channel to group. So a lot of times I'll try, I'll try to say something, but it ends up going to group and I'm like, oh man, I, I meant to say that. So I tend to just default to group personally, and then I will have a hotkey that directly sends me to an, another channel. Say is a popular one. Uh, but you know, that's totally up to you. It's just good to be aware of this and then you can configure it however you like it to be. Tip number 10, I recommend binding camera angles directly. Some people like to cycle through with F9, which is the default. I find it to be a little bit of a pain because you're not sure what number camera you're on. So what I like to do is I use, I like to use shift Z to go to my default camera angle first person. And then I'll do Z to do this overhead and then control Z to do uh, this tether camera right here, which gives you better shots from a lower angle. So uh, just experiment with that and be aware that you can bind camera angles directly instead of cycling through them. This is actually really great when you're trying to return to the default first person camera, which is the camera most people actually prefer to use this one right here. And you can, of course, use your mouse wheel to zoom back or zoom in. This is probably the most useful camera angle simply because it works in first or, first or third person. So I recommend binding that one directly. Tip number 11, I highly recommend never messing with your gamma. It, I leave it at 31, which I believe is the default. And in any case, it works great for me. Just keep it at 31. This, game, this client has the most bizarre gamma effects that I've ever seen. If you mess with it too much, it actually screws up all of Windows and messes up your brightness all across your entire computer. So I, I recommend never touching Gamma. There's so many weird things about it. If you're a streamer and you're broadcasting it and you want it to be brighter, I recommend doing that in the filters via OBS or whatever streaming software you're, you're using or if you're recording. Just add a filter to make it brighter. That seems to work a little bit better in that way. You're not warping your gamma all across your entire operating system. Tip number 12 is setting your chat font size, which is a great one. As you can see, I have an enormous chat font size because, well, look at that worm. Because I like to set my font size for viewers when I'm streaming. So I'll type, you know, chat font size five to keep it big. Or if I want it like normal size, I'll set it to three. And I can set it to one if you want it insanely tiny. Maybe you're an ant or something like that and you want to read ant size but I like to keep it on four or five, especially if you're playing on the higher resolutions. So give that a shot and see what works for you. Tip number 13 is turning off the auto inspect. This can be super annoying 
because I'll often just right click when I'm trying to loot and I'll end up inspecting myself. So what you want to do is toggle inspect on if you want to keep it on. And then when you right click yourself, you'll see, hey, this is the guy's loot that I was looking at. And you can use shift up, of course, as I previously showed you. And then you can be like off. You can turn that off. And now you can't inspect yourself anymore. So that makes that that's a super annoying thing if you don't know how to control that. Because that happens all the time when you try to loot things at the early levels. So I recommend turning it off. Tip number 14 is using slash who T to inspect people's level, race, and so on. You can inspect just about everything about them. So for example, I'm expecting myself, I do slash who T. That's going to tell me I'm a 48 bard right now. It tells me I'm a half elf and tells me what zone I'm in. So that's really handy if you're trying to figure out mainly who's in your party or who's communicating with you if you're looking for a port you're looking for druids that can be great it's mainly i mainly use it though when i see somebody like i see somebody run by and i'm like oh what's that guy i'll target him and then i'll do slash who t or you know of course you can make a macro for this to do it quickly or if you're a fast typer you can just type slash who t and it'll tell you exactly what they are and that's really handy if you're looking for certain kinds of spells to be cast on you or something like that Tip number 15, this may not be super obvious because it's a little more mm, not super user friendly. Not everyone's a programmer or comfortable with command line tools, but I'll show, give you a simple example of how to use the who command slash who. Who will show you everyone that's in the current zone. So for example, here in the Emerald Jungle, there are four people. It'll tell you all about them. And there's a lot of advanced functionality uh, and I'll show you here some basics. So slash who, of course, will do that. But you can also simply just do slash and it'll just assume you meant who, which is good to know if that's less typing. But you can also do who all if you want to check every single zone. And this is great if you want to check, for example, who is level 45 to 50, that is LFG. So this would be great if you're looking to start a group or something along those lines. And you can see there are four players that are LFG status right now. So maybe I would start mes messaging them, trying to get a group together, or maybe I already started one and I'm looking for more people. This is a great way to find people that are looking for a party. You can also use this tool to check who's in certain zones. Every zone has a certain name. So if I want to do who all city missed, I just happen to know that that's the name of the zone. And it'll tell me there's 12 people in that zone. That's a great way to figure out how crowded certain zones are and that can affect your decision making in terms of where you're going to go for that evening. You don't want to go somewhere that's too crowded because then there's not going to be anything there to kill. And of course you can even check who, you can even filter by class. That could be like, who's the, show me all the 60 warriors and they'll tell you there's 60, you know, there's seven 60 warriors that are online. Just bear in mind that this does not include players that are anonymous, so you're not going to get everyone in these queries. Tip number 16, you can use Control i or Control d uh, There's a few hotkeys you can use to quickly follow, invite, or disband from groups. So basically, these are all your commands to interact with groups, the main ones that you use. So if you go to Keys under the Commands category, you're going to see Invite slash Follow. That's an overloaded uh, E right there. So you just, for me, it's control I. Maybe it's a little different for you. But if you use the install that I have distributed, then you will see that control I is set by the default. And disband is control D. So just be aware of those because you don't always want to have to pull this window up. I generally don't keep the actions key there all the time unless I need to make a macro or find some skill that I'm not using. I'd like to have as much screen space available as possible so i usually get rid of that and i use Control m to pull that up there's a few different ways to pull that window up that's in the hotkeys as well just be aware that invite follow and disband are all here so you don't have to go digging for that menu every time and that leads into tip number 17 which is actually how to do that that's alt m there's more than one way to do it if you highlight these little tabs right here it'll tell you that you can actually do it with these other hotkeys as well so if i did Control m or Control, actually that just jumps to the tab but to actually get rid of it, it would be Alt-M to get rid of it. So just be aware that you can, um, you can jump to the tabs using these hotkeys, but you can also, if you don't want to show it all the time, just use Alt-M and that will get rid of it. Tip number 18 is using a basic macro to make life a little easier. 
once again, if you press Alt M right there on that fourth tab, if you hit Control O, you can hop over there or just click it right here. And as you can see, you can make any macro that you want. And you have a lot of macros. You got like 12 pages of macros. So you have to, you're not going to run out of macros unless you're some kind of lunatic. I'm a, I play a bard, so I haven't even come close to using them all. But you may if you need to do a lot of socials, such as auctions, or maybe if you're raiding and you need a whole bunch of different hotkeys for certain bosses. Those are great for that. Now, for example, here's a simple macro for casting a bard song. I don't want to play, I don't want to do stop song and then cast one every single time. I use uh, song number one right here. So what I do, I do is I do slash stop song and then I, on the second line I do cast one and that's how I cast. So as you can see, I just click one time and that does my hymn of restoration. And macros are a pretty deep topic. You can do a lot with these. There's a lot, you know, you can do targeting. You can do just about anything you can think of. You can probably do it with a macro. So that was a more advanced topic, maybe for another video. Tip number 19, with Dukes of UI, you're gonna have two button sets. Just be aware that you can have as many as four that I know of. I know that you can press Shift-Alt-K to toggle the fourth one. Uh, Alt Shift J to toggle the third one, or in mine I have it set to Shift Alt H for the second one. So uh, basically, you can go in, and you can find these hotkeys for getting rid of these. As you can see, it's this under UI. It's this toggle hotbar two, three, and four. So maybe if I didn't want all of those, I could just get rid of them. But I generally always have the second one. Maybe the fourth one if I want to pull up something extra for specific situations. I don't use all of them, but you could if you wanted to. That's an option, especially if you're doing a lot of extra macros such as rating or whatever. You may need a lot more hotkeys. So that's nice because you can make those accessible via other hotkeys that will make it a lot easier instead of clicking everything all the time. That may not be what you want to do. So you can take advantage of these hot bars and make life a little bit easier. Tip number 20, what about when you create a new character and you want it to be set up exactly like your main character? Well, instead of setting everything up again, what you can do is you can go into your EverQuest folder and you can look at this file. It's called UI underscore whatever your character's name. And you can, what you can do is you can copy that folder so what you want to do is you want to create the character first and then you'll go in this folder and you'll see that that character has a newly created UI INI file. You can go ahead and delete the new character's INI file and then copy the one that you actually want. You would take that and then paste it and then you have a copy of that. And what you're going to want to do is you want to go in and then you want to call it, you know, new character. And then you get rid of this right here. It says copy. Once that file is properly renamed, you can log right back into that character and it should look perfect. Tip 21 is pasting from the clipboard. By default, this is not bound. So what you're gonna have to do is go into your options, into the keys under UI. And at the very bottom, there's gonna be one that's called paste from clipboard. So say you wanted to say, share a YouTube link with your friends or something like that. You would just change this to whatever you want that hotkey to be. Uh, personally, I went with a Linux paste. I went with shift control insert. You can make it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So just as an example, I could take this hotkey over here and paste it. And then others could see that I pasted a YouTube link right into chat. So that's an easy way to share links or whatever you want to paste into the text input. Tip 22 is for inventory management. This is using control click to move one thing at a time. Normally, if you click, you're gonna get this menu, which is pretty annoying, and the slider is a bit of a pain. So what you do is you do control left click, and that will move one at a time, and you can put it right back. And tip 23 is using shift, which will actually move all of them in one click, which is really great when you're interacting with merchants. You can use this to sell 20 at once or sell one at a time when you click the sell button. So this is definitely a great tip to know about. Tip 24 is using the face cam while you're running to kite things a little bit better. 
what you can do is if you're kiting something and you're running like this, but you don't want to look behind you, you know, it would be a little be a little bit a bit of a pain if you wanted to try to look at it by twisting camera angles around and all that. Don't do that. Instead, what you want to do is you want to run. You can just keep running forward and hit Shift T to see behind you, and then hit it again, and you'll be running forward still. You didn't have to mess with the camera angle at all. All you had to do is hit Shift T, hit Shift T again, and that'll toggle you out of it. That's a great way to look behind you without messing up whatever you were currently doing. So give that a shot and let me know what you think about that. And last but not least is tip 25, which isn't really a user interface tip. It's more of a merchant tip that helps you get rid of really heavy coins a little more easily. What you want to do is go to a merchant. And most people don't know this, but often you can sell and buy a lot of items for the exact same price. And what this does is this will often make it easy to convert all of your lower denomination currencies, such as copper, silver, and gold into platinum. So all you'd have to do is find an item or items that you can sell and you could, you could buy and then sell right back for the exact same cost. So what you're going to want to do, you know, there's certain ones that I always look for, such as the, the earrings, the necklace is another one. And they all kind of tend to be categorized along with each other if you look at a merchant. Unfortunately, I'm not at a merchant here. It would make it a little bit of a better demonstration. But I'm just trying to make you aware that this is a possible thing. Like here's another item like these. Mithril amulet is, would be something that I would check. You're also going to want to check the merchant's quantity. And make sure that you never buy the last one that they have. So if it says quantity one, that means that you don't want to buy it. And then... All you do is you just keep buying, you keep buying them on until as, as long as they still have it, just keep buying it and then sell them right back. And eventually it's going to use all your lower denomination currencies first, and then it'll convert it back into platinum when you sell it. So that's a great tip, especially when you don't have easy access to a bank and you're out and about in the world. I did it all the time when I was outside of Solusec A. That's a great tip. You can do it at just about any merchant as long as they have the items that are the same cost to buy and sell. So just keep an eye out for those items. And it's easy to test out because you can buy one and then see what the sell price is. And you'll be like, oh, this is the same sell price as the buy price. So that's one of the items that I want to try doing that with. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope that helped you out. That should make playing EverQuest a little bit easier. I know it can be a little bit of a pain at first, but once you get these tips down, it makes your quality of life a lot better. So I hope that helped you out. Let me know. Give me some feedback. Like, subscribe if you like the content. And I'll see you guys next video.